Hey, welcome back again, guys. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you are able to support me on Patreon, that'll be awesome. Okay, so continuing on here, in this video, we want to learn about um, the construct function, okay? So let me remove anything that is unnecessary here, and which is most of this. Okay, let's do that. No need for these anymore. Actually, let's remove everything here. So what I want to do is, uh, there's a function called construct. So I'll say function construct. Now, we just don't write this as construct, but we put two underscores like this and say construct. Construct. Yeah, there we go. I got it finally. Okay. So why is this function written like this anyway? Well, the reason it's written like this, these are two underscores here, double underscore, right? Not just one, but two. Now, there's a family of, um, of functions that are special, that are meant for classes, and these are called magic methods. They're methods because they are functions that are inside a class. So this one is a magic method. Now, the reason it's a magic method is because it's triggered automatically. You don't have to call it, right? It's triggered automatically by a certain event. So if something happens that it was designed for, it's going to be called automatically, okay? Now, there are a lot of magic methods. We're going to have a video dedicated to all the magic methods so you can learn what all of them are. But in this particular case, the construct is kind of special because it's the most used uh, magic method. So what does this do? Well, what this does is immediately you instantiate a class like this one. So the moment I do an instance like this, this function will run by itself, no need to call it. So in here, for example, if I say echo uh, instance created, like this okay so instance created uh, let me put a break tag just in case we may want to echo this a couple of times so just this class and this that function and then I make an instance here that's all we're doing here right so let me go to my page and refresh and you see that an instance was created the function ran even though we didn't actually call it it just ran that's what magic methods do. They run on a specific event. So what is the advantage of uh, the construct here? Well, now before I explain what the advantage is, there is a second function that is the opposite to this one. And it's called a function destruct, right? Of course, there is a destruct function as well. So here I will copy this, put it here, instance, destroyed. So of course this one runs when an instance is destroyed. So let's see that in action as well. Yeah, so you see instance created, instance destroyed. Now the reason this one runs is because PHP automatically destroys all uh, classes at the end of the script. So it just destructs all of them. So this one is code every time a function self-destructs or when you delete the function itself or the class when you set it to no or something like that then this one will run as well but uh, this is rarely used by people mostly this one is the champion so why would you want to do this why would you want to use the constructor now if you notice here whenever i create a um, an instance I don't actually need to put these brackets there like this I can just do it like this and it's still valid no errors as you can see but sometimes I will put these uh, brackets there now what do these brackets mean exactly now these brackets correspond to these brackets here on the construct function so that is that okay so if I put a variable here and I say I need a variable there like this, 
then I have an issue now because I have to put that variable here, just like the way we call functions, because now it expects a variable there. So if I come here and try to run this, it's going to tell me that the argument count, too few arguments were given. Well, it's actually zero that were given, but yeah. So there are fewer arguments here than what I expected. It expects one, but it got a zero. I'm sure it says that itself. Yeah, expects exact, exactly one, one expected, but uh, zero who was passed. So it says zero passed and exactly one was expected. Okay, so zero is passed, one was expected. So that, like I said, these brackets correspond to the construct. So as long as there's a construct function in a class and then it's got variables here, then you need to provide those variables here as well. But why would you want to do this? Well, there's one reason here. Now, let's say, for example, you want to create a variable up here. So this is a public variable or a private, doesn't really matter. Maybe let's make it private. Eh, maybe public, well public uh let's say my time is equal to uh time like this okay so now look at this uh this is the function for getting the particular time in uh in seconds since 1970 yeah so we are getting the time in seconds here and we are putting it inside a variable there once we call the class and then we are not actually putting any value there, just like here. So everything seems fine, right? So let's try and run this. So if I refresh here and it's going to go to a fatal error and say constant expression contains invalid operations. Mm -hmm. On line five. So what exactly does this mean? So on line five, we have this problem here. Now, the problem here is that you are not allowed to put uh, you're not allowed to put values here that are generated at runtime. OK, so what does runtime mean? It means while the script is running, because time has to be calculated during runtime. It's not a specific value, but it's going to get the time that will be generated at that particular runtime when the script is running. So you cannot give values to these variables of runtime specific things. Even something like this, for example, I can't say uh, 10 times two like this because this is not a static value. It's going to be generated at runtime. So I will have equally a problem there. Oh, apparently not. Wow, I, did, I, I actually didn't know this. So apparently this can be done. But the point is that uh, if if a value is going to be generated at runtime while the thing is running then we're going to have a problem so for example if i have two of these here so apparently this is uh, good to go yeah so my time is equal to 10 times 2 so let's use it why not so let me make my time 2 there and then i'm going to equate this one to a variable like that now Definitely here I will get an error unless uh, things changed since the last time I checked, just like this one here. <laughs> so let's see here. What I'm doing is I'm setting my time 2 to my time, whatever the result of my time 1 is going to be. So now this result is generated at runtime, uh, this particular one here. So let's see if we everything is honky-dory. And uh, as expected, it's not. So constant expression contains invalid operation. So what this means, if you get this error, what it's talking about is saying you cannot put values that are undefined. Uh, I guess here the reason why this worked is because these are actual numbers. They're like, um, they're solid numbers. They're actual values. So I guess this is okay. But here, this is not a an actual value. It's a variable. So which means... It's generated much later after the script is running. So this is why you get this error. Now, there are times when, for example, I do want to know what time this uh, function was created. 
and I want something like this, right? I want to know the time. So in this case, it's going to be difficult, but the constructor will come to my rescue because here what I can do is I can set this at runtime. So I can do this. I'll set this to an empty string like this. And then here, <coughs> uh, I'll say something like the time is, and then I want to put this in here, right? So I will say this like that and put my time. Of course, I will remove that part there. Now this can work inside the string because of the double quotes here. So keep that in mind. If you use single quotes here, you will not get the evaluated value here. So this my time. So let's come back here and let's try this. So it says the time is and there's an empty string because why the time is an empty string. But we can actually set this right here during the construct time. So I can say this time is equal to time like so. Okay, so if I do that now and refresh, I get the current time. So these are the number of seconds since 1970. That's how many seconds have passed. So if I refresh, you see the number of seconds will change every second. You get one more second here. This number never reduces. It just keeps going bigger and bigger and bigger because the number of se uh, seconds since 1970 keeps increasing, of course. If I refresh, I get more like that. Okay, so now what I want you to get away from this is that using the constructor, you can set values uh, here at the top that cannot be uh, set at runtime because of the restriction inside classes. So you can have many of these. Let's say, for example, what a typical use of this would be, maybe setting uh, database values, okay? So you can have... Um, DB name, uh, things like that. DB name is equal to, and then you can set them right here. So, how you do that is this let's say DB name and um, uh, host name, maybe something like this host name and database name and username and password and all that stuff, right? All that great stuff. So, you can set those things right here and say this like this this host name is equal to whatever host name was given, like, like this. So same thing here, same thing there. I'll say DB name, copy, and then I will duplicate there and do that, okay? So I'm setting them in real time, but where do I get these values exactly? So these values will be brought in through here now. So as you can see here, I'll copy that and paste there, okay? So now I have given these values and then I will set them immediately the class is created now you can set these values directly in there but then the problem is for example something like localhost i can set it here localhost no problem right but the problem is if i give somebody this class and say uh here's a class that connects to the database you can use it the problem is they have to open up the class and start editing these values which i might not want you know i want the class to remain portable and it can go anywhere regardless of the host maybe this is not the correct host maybe it's online or it's not local host uh, then it becomes a problem because the user will have to come in here and start editing things which defeats the purpose of having a class that is portable right so instead you do it this way and then what do you do when the user tries to create a new instance of this so maybe this one is a database class so we say let's change it from product to database so this is the database class now so i'm just going to say db here is equal to new database like that but now because of the nature of things here i have to pass in localhost and db name so here i will say localhost and then i put a comma and put the database name so uh, my db something like this you see so now what this means is this class can be in a different file i don't even have to see it all i need to know is that when instantiating the class i have to provide these details like localhost my db what is the username and password and then these guys will be set in real time right over there 
then why set them over here instead of just doing it over there? It's because the rest of the functions that are down here cannot access something in here, but they can definitely access something at the top there. So once these values are set there, then any function here that wants to read from the database can use those values to connect. It might not be these particular values themselves. It could be any value here. You know what variables do. So this is a the proper way of doing things. If I refresh now, undefined property, my time on line 13. So what mistake did we make? My time. Okay, so this no longer exists, right? This is why it's uh, giving me this, this issue here. So because I removed my time there. So remove. And if I do this, I will get nothing and no errors here. But if I do not provide these items here, then I get that issue of too few arguments, right? So too few arguments there and so on. Now, sometimes you may uh, want these to be optional because sometimes not everyone will fill in all these. So what you can do is just make them optional like this by equating them to specific values, you know? You can put default values here like local local hosts and then my db there right my db something like this so these become uh, default values in case somebody does not provide their own you get to use the default ones over there like at this okay and if i now refresh i don't get that error because there are some defaults that are provided okay so the takeaway here is that the constructor can be used to set values immediately the class is instantiated and then the constructor runs immediately the class is instantiated so if i instantiate my class two or three times each of these times the constructor will run three times so let's let's uh uh let's see created something like this break okay so that we see how many times it's created so we have instantiated it three times and if i refresh you see three times created okay so hopefully you understand what the constructor does and how it can actually be used okay so uh but but let me mention before I go that uh, in here you can run other functions down here. You just don't need to set. Uh, you just don't need to set properties here. You can do anything in this function. You can run other functions and so on. You can run all the functions that are in here. It's entirely up to you what you want to do with the constructor at this point. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.